Welcome to Wayfarers, a monthly spiritual exploration. My name is Gregory Morrissey, and I'm so glad that you are joining us this month. A wayfarer is a person who travels, a pilgrim on a journey. And a wayfinder is a sign or marker that helps orient travelers on the road. And this course invites you to consider becoming both one who journeys and one who guides others. Each month, there are three offerings a self-study, some class discussion, and small groups. This month, our essential question is, what is worship? The Psalms tell us, make a joyful noise. But then Jesus later says, whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. For me, there is forever a push and pull in any given worship service, maybe even more than one. It doesn't matter if it's a regular Sunday morning or Christmas Eve or a wedding. On, on the one hand, I'm showing up with my own story, my own need, my own individual personal relationship with God. Worship should guide and support me in my faith journey. On the other hand, church is not McDonald's. I don't show up, place my order, and get the thing. When I show up, I'm one of many voices singing, one of many donors supporting, one of many volunteers creating the very church that I want. Worship, therefore, should guide and support us all in our shared building and sustaining of the church, of the body. And on the third hand, worship is a conversation with God. We invite God in. We ask God to participate. Could there be some element of worship that is not for me, but is for God's sake? Take, for example, a unison prayer. I'm praying those words for myself. If it's a prayer of confession, I'm asking God to forgive my sin. If it's a prayer of invocation, I'm asking God to show up in my life. But then we all do it together. We read a prayer in unison, and, and so now I'm praying for your repentance, too. I'm praying for God to show up in your life and in our shared life also. But uh, unison prayers can be weird, am I right? When I first started coming back to faith and back to church, I took those unison prayers very seriously. I read them first thing when I got to worship. I had a pen. I would check them uh, whenever I got my bulletin. I sometimes would edit them if I didn't like or didn't understand something that was said. I eventually started clipping them out and, and pasting them into a scrapbook, saving them, because the pastor had written these prayers for me. They were messages that, that came out of our conversations, and, and he must have, or the Holy Spirit through him must have crafted, crafted created that prayer for that moment for me. A few years later, I mentioned this to my pastor, and he said, oh, huh, you know, I've just been copying, out of, copying them out of this book. And then he gave the book to me. And uh, something kind of sucked all of the potency out of unison prayers in general. For weeks, all I could hear was the, the drone of all our voices together parroting back words that were not our own, were not even of our community. Did they have any meaning or any power? We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. So for us, at the Plymouth Church in Framingham, 
oftentimes I will write our own prayers so that they are at least of our community and of our time. But I have been known to dive into a book or even just use a psalm. And I think there's power there too. That our prayers are not just our prayers, but they are the prayers of the whole church. And they span the whole of our tradition. This month, I'm very excited to say we will not be listening to another podcast. (laughs) Instead, I want to invite each of us into this tension between worship as a shared group activity and worship as a solitary, private conversation with God. And what better, what better way to do that than to look closely at the Lord's Prayer? Or as it was known in the early church, simply the prayer. The Society of St. John the Evangelist, which is an Episcopal religious order, recently published a special issue of their Cowley magazine in which they explore the depth of the Lord's Prayer with a mix of reflections written in the book, as well as meditation prompts for you to pray and reflect upon, this book offers you an opportunity to really go deep into what the prayer means and how it might live in your life, how it might serve your spiritual needs, and maybe even the spiritual needs of the church. I've begun, and I'm finding it a really useful pathway into a prayer that can sometimes get a little stale. As Brother Todd says, we hope to return to the words of this prayer, to strip away what dulls us to it, and to return anew to its transformative power. You can access this magazine online as well as download a printable PDF. So no workbook from me this month. They've already created it. There are eight reflections in this book, and each invites us into a moment or two of contemplation. So pace yourself. There may be a lot this month. This may be more of a crockpot month and less of a flash fry. Before we go, shall we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.